Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we'll be talking about a question that comes up often in Open RAN discussions. What is the need for the Open RAN movement if networks use 3GPP based interfaces which are already open and standardized? This is a very interesting and relevant question, so let's discuss. Let's start with the basic architecture you have seen in our other videos. For today's video, let's use 4G LTE as an example, as it's easier to explain and more relevant for 5G discussions as well. The two interfaces from the RAN point of view are the AIR interface, also known as the UU or LTE UU interface that uses the RRC protocol, and the S1 interface between the RAN and the core. Both of these interfaces are standardized by 3GPP and open, so no issues here. However, the simplified 4G network is more like what is shown in this diagram if we go into just a little bit more detail. There are two more interfaces that are the key reason the Open RAN movement started. The first is the front hall. As we discuss in our Open RAN concept video, there are two components in the RAN, the virtualized BBU software that runs on COT servers and the remote radio head or RRH. The interface between them is known as front hall and it uses a SIPRI protocol. This protocol generally has vendor specific implementation and is not necessarily open. Open RAN focused organizations are trying to get rid of this SIPRI in the front hall by using other open alternatives. For example, the ORAN Alliance defines eSIPRI to use with Split 7. Small Cell Forum, on the other hand, has defined NFAPI to use with Split 6. Even though you may think these eSIPRI and NFAPI are specific to 5G, they can be used for 4G as well, along with other Ethernet based open front hall options. The second interface to note is the X2 interface. Even though this interface has been defined by 3GPP, it is an optional interface. Many incumbent vendors intentionally did not implement this initially, and when they did implement it, they used many proprietary messages over this interface, thereby ensuring that multi-vendor networks were difficult for an operator to deploy. What does the X2 interface do? Frankly, as you can see, it does a lot of different things, but we won't go through all of those points in detail today. The main thing to note is that X2 is quite useful for 4G network, even though it is an optional interface. For multi-vendor networks to function seamlessly, this interface becomes essential, especially for managing interference. It becomes even more important in the case of 5G. Let's see how. As you're no doubt aware, all the 5G deployments today are 5G non-standalone, or NSA deployments. People who are familiar with technical terminology also call this option 3, 3A, 3X, or by 3GPP defined name, ian dc What this means, in simple terms, is that the 5G new radio is used for the access network, but only works in conjunction with the 4G LTE access network and the 4G core, also known as EPC. So, if the X2 interfaces are not open, then operators are forced to deploy 5G today using their existing 4G LTE vendors. In some cases, the operators have come up with innovative solutions where they have provided a new or existing small chunk of 4G spectrum to the new 5G vendor to break this 4G dependency, but every operator does not have a spare chunk of spectrum available for these kind of innovative solutions. Open interfaces would be very helpful in such a scenario. We have introduced the groups looking at standardizing Open RAN in an earlier video. This slide highlights the ORAN working groups. If you notice, Working Group 4 is focused on delivering truly open front hall interfaces, while Working Group 5 is focused on creating open interfaces that have been defined by 3GPP. As you will notice, X2 is one such interface this Working Group focuses on. Telecom Infra Project takes a similar approach to ORAN. The Open RAN and Open RAN 5G NR groups are focused on front hall as well as other open interfaces to facilitate multi-vendor solutions enabling a diverse ecosystem for operators. We hope this short video helped clarify why the open RAM movement is still necessary, even though we use 3GPP defined interfaces for many different connections, be it air interface or connecting to the core and to the outside world. And that's it for today's video. If you found this information helpful and informative, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. You can also visit our website at parallelwireless.com for more information. Thank you and see you again soon.